Almighty. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, his bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Oh, you're so great, God. because you deserve all the honor, all the glory, all the praise in this place. You get it all, God. You get it all, God. Oh, we love you, Father. 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 Oh, the Spirit is in this place right now. Oh, the Holy Spirit is flowing through this place right now. Oh, that sweet, sweet presence is just in this place right now. Oh, we love you, God. Oh, we love you, God. Oh, we love you, God. We honor you, Father. Oh, have your way in this place, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my life, God. <laughs> every day, every waking moment that I'm here, that you have woken me up. Every moment that I get, that you have graciously given to me, God. Oh, I give it all to you. It is all yours. Every breath that I take, every breath that I take, every time my heart pumps, that's you, God. Oh, oh, we love you, Father. We thank you, Father. Oh, we honor you. We exalt you in this place. Oh, for everything that you have done for us, everything that you have brought us through, all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us, just the simple fact that we have access to what our inheritance is because you love us so much that we have the authority, that we have the authority, that we have the freedom. Oh, that we can take days like today, a baptism Sunday, and we can make this outward proclamation to our fellow peers and to ourselves that we can do this. Oh, God, you are good. You are so, so good to us. <laughs> oh, you are so good to us, God. We just want to honor you. We just want to worship you. We just want to praise you. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, and we thank you for all of these things in your son's name. Oh, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen, you guys. Well, welcome to Restoration Church Tulsa. We're so glad everybody's with us today. Um, this is our time of our tithing and our offering. Um, and it's another form of worship. By, by honoring God's system that he laid out for us is a form of worship. I'm going to go ahead and read this scripture to you really quick. Um, 
Hang on one second. Let's get that up there. <laughs> um, here we go. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grains and your vats will overflow with good wine. And that's Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Amen. Amen. Well, um, we have different ways that you can give. We have text to give. You can give online. We have the Church Center app. We do have offering envelopes um, in the chair pockets in front of you. And we're not passing um, offering buckets at this time, just still trying to be um, diligent over the COVID and spreading any germs. So uh, we do have offering buckets on the side of the stage here and at the very back on your way out if you want to drop that in there. We do have hand sanitizers there also. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let's pray over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this special day. We thank you for giving us the provision that, that we have, Father God. And we thank you for the opportunity to give back into your kingdom, Father. And I just pray a sp special blessing upon everyone that's giving today. Father, just bless their households. Bless them financially. Bless them bless their houses, bless their family. Just let it be a trickle-down effect, Father God. We just thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we've got a quick announcement video for you. Welcome to Restoration Church, and we're so blessed and honored that you decided to join us today. We'd like to again thank you for partnering with us financially. Don't forget that you can give online. We have text to give. You can go to our website and give there, and we have the Church Center app. Kenny, what are you doing? I'm getting ready for the men's breakfast. The men's breakfast? Why are you sparring? Well, obviously, you haven't seen Keith and Bruce at the buffet line. Oh, uh, join us every third Saturday at Golden Corral on 71st. Be there, men. Join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our Bible study, Christ Led or Not, a study in 2 Timothy. We'll see you there. Hey, all you parents, mark your calendars for August 8th. We have our baby dedication here in the sanctuary. The sign-up sheet is in the foyer, so be sure to sign up and get those babies dedicated. Join us August 1st. We have our water baptism here at Restoration Church. We have the sign up sheet in the foyer, so be sure to sign up and join us. Goggles and snorkels not required. So again, we would like to thank you for choosing Restoration Church to visit today. And we hope this word blesses you today and gets you through this next week. Now let's get ready for the word. Restoration Church. How many of you are happy to be here today? Ooh, that's all right. No, I don't think y'all would be that happy if God was in the building. Well, guess what? God's in the building. So how many is happy to be here today? Woo! Hallelujah! You know, we had, a, we had a meeting this morning, which we do every Sunday, but, you know, we were talking about some of the things that need to change in the church. You know, God's calling us to a new level. Before you can move to a new level, you got to understand what your levels are. And one thing that has to happen is we can't be lackadaisical anymore. We can't come to church like it's just another Sunday and, you know, it's just what we do. There's a reason for that. You know, there's a verse in Psalms that says, I will fully emerge myself in the glory and the presence of the God. And, you know, mom used to read it all the time. You know, I don't even know where the verse is because, I, you know, I just listened to it. I just heard it so much that I now can repeat it, but I can't tell you where it's at. And so I was thinking about that. And, uh, you know, when you were asked to speak or you're asked to do all that stuff, you sometimes you want to make sure you have, you know, every part of it. I got to know what the verse is, where it's at, how long it is, which different translation it comes from, all that, you know. And God was telling me, it's like, you know, you guys focus on the wrong stuff. You focus on having the whole picture before you get the small part of the picture. The small part of the picture is, I just want you to succeed. I want you to be able to say something that is written, that I've told you, 
to get you out of a situation. And a lot of times we don't we don't say those things because we don't really understand or know where they are where they're at or if that's what you should say at that spot. But when you start trusting your spirit on the inside when it's telling you things and you can go and start to look that stuff up and get clarity from the word, then you start to go to another plane. And so that's what we're supposed to do. And I believe that's the reason why, you know, this water baptism is so important because it starts to tell you that, you know, regardless of what people think, what other people say, I'm going to do my due diligence. I'm going to get in. I'm going to emerge myself in what's supposed to be done. Because, you know, we shouldn't be up here just, you know, hanging through to work to see what he has to say. You know, what, what word God gave him. You know, that's great because, you know, you need that. But, man, you should be trying to hang on what word God gave you. Because... It's always going to be more, a lot better and more personable and more powerful when he gives it to you than when he gives it to somebody else to give to you. Because usually what that means is you weren't listening when he told you, so he had to bring somebody else to tell you what he said. Because, you know, a lot of us would be like, you know, we know what God's telling us to do. Stop doing that. And you're like, yeah, okay, that's just my head. You know, I'm good. And then God would say, okay, well, let me get somebody else. Come on. Hey, God told me to tell you stop doing that. And for some odd reason, we would believe that more than we believe what our, our inner man is saying. It's like, oh, okay, well, he said it. It must be real. That's, that's what this whole thing is about. God is trying to get you to ignite that inner man. to, to under, So he, he's the one that's closer to him. He's the one that understands the, the dialect that God speaks. And he's trying to get you to understand that in your mortal mind. So... Don't think of this as just a normal baptism. You know, so you, we come in and give a public show, somebody getting dunked in some water. That's great. But what you need to understand is what that principle is set up for is to wash away the carnal mind to bring in the spiritual mind. And after you do that, once you do that, it changes everything about it. it it's You'll get up out of that water thinking, you know, yeah, I'm, if we're here the same. You know, I, don't, I don't feel no different. That's not what that's about. Your spirit man is what's going to feel the difference because you have just made a public show telling everybody, telling God himself, I'm about to emerge myself in you. And so then what that does is it ignites your spirit. So everybody should be happy, encouraging that person is going under, hey, you're getting ready to come out on some fire because that's what it should do to you. It should fire you up. Well, Lord, we thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for the huge opportunity that we get to in, in to make ourselves more strengthening in your spirit, Father, to uh, encourage that fire on the inside of us to awaken and, and just cultivate and catch other people on fire. We thank you, Father, that for those who are going through this, Father, this will be a life-changing experience, that it will just bring that spiritual stuff up out of them that they never even thought they had. We thank you, Father, that we know this already done because you said anything that we ask in your name, it's done. It's a decree that has already been made whole through, the, through your spirit, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Father, as we do these things that we bless our, our community, our church, and the people around us, Father, that it will be able to be a strengthening and a show that you are still alive and you work miracles every day. We thank you for these things in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Man, I should. Man, I'm excited to be here today. I should hear more excitement out there. Come on, let's give God some praise. Just a quick praise. Thank you, Father. Okay. All right. This is what we're gonna do because today is Wash Sunday. It's not just a religious routine. Everybody, stand up, please. Everyone, stand up. Hallelujah. Everyone, just stand up for a quick moment. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to work out the kinks today because what we're here for today is not just another church service. We're here to give God his glory, his praise, and we're here. We have the privilege to see people baptized and their lives changed today. Hallelujah. So one, on the count of three, let's just give him one big shout and we'll get to the word. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 
I'm excited today. Let me say that again. Today is Wash Sunday at Restoration Church Tulsa. We call it Washed, and I'll break it down. Baptism Sunday, whatever you want to call it, but here we call it Washed because there is a, a prophetic thing that happens when we choose or someone chooses to be baptized. This is what I was sharing with my team today. I was like, we sh- even if we're not getting baptized today, we should be excited because we have the honor and the privilege to see somebody else baptized, for one, and we get to cheer them on. We get to be a part of this day or this special. It's not just a religious activity. It is an act of declaration, a public declaration that we are choosing to wash away the old and become anew. That's important, guys. It should be like, yeah. I'm not getting baptized. So I need Matter of fact, some of y'all probably think, well, as soon as church is over and they do the baptism, I'm out. I don't need to be. I ain't getting baptized. Guys, that is not what it's about. It's about the body coming together to encourage. How many do we have getting baptized today? Okay. We got enough getting baptized today. Also, listen, walk-ins or walk-ups, whatever you want to call it, are welcome. If you didn't come here uh, to get baptized today, but you change your mind and you want to get baptized, you can get baptized. Amen. That's the way we do it. But this is important. It's special uh, because today I'm going to make them the chips and our water out there is going to be the sauce. So we're going to be dipping. We're going to be dipping, dipping. The water has been prayed over. It has been drenched with anointing oil so it's going to be a good day for those who choose to be baptized in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen Amen. washed somebody say washed Washed. let me tell you guys a quick story i uh over the years i was afraid of water like swimming pools oceans anything and i had a reason when i was a kid i don't know I, i don't know if my aunt cheryl knows this but i went to stay with her one time at one of her apartments and i went to the little community pool it's not her fault, by the way, either, okay? I want to tell you what happened. I went with some friends I knew because I knew some friends around there. We went to the, went to the little apartment uh, pool, and I'm, I can't swim at the time. So I stay in the three-foot end. That's where I get down. But my friends were swimming and jumping in. They said, oh, come down here and just sit with us. I was like, okay. So I went down there, and I was just sitting, you know. You know how you sit down and you just dangle your feet in the water. I'm just dangling my feet in the water, having a good time. I'm not getting in. I'm not going to get in. If I'm going to get in, I'm getting in the three foot. All I know is I'm sitting here and I just feel something go boom. And all I know is in the bottom of the pool. Freaking out because I can't swim and I don't know what happened. I'm freaking out and I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm about to die. And next thing I know, I just feel my body come up out of the water, boom, and plopped on it. And, you know, I'm choking and freaking out and there's, you okay? You okay? And once I recovered, the next thing I wanted to do was fight. Who pushed me in the water? I'm going to kill you. Who pushed me in the water? And there's some older kids. <laughs> and I'm like, what's funny? I'll beat you up too. I was so mad. I was so mad. And then I found out they said, so-and-so tried to jump over you. And as he jumped over you, he clipped you. And I went in the water. I was so mad. But I was afraid of water. I wanted nothing to do with water. I tell you that story because when it came time for me to ba- be baptized at my grandmother's church, it's like, I want to be baptized, but I don't know if he's going to be trying to drown me when he puts my head on the water. I'm not trying. I don't know if I want to do that. I was just so nervous because I had a traumatic experience with water. So when he come to baptize me, when he's getting baptized, he's like, hold your nose. I was like, how long are you going to leave me under there? <laughs> yeah, because uh, I- I'm afraid of the water. But he dipped me, dumped me. I was like, ah, oh, I felt like I had a quick victory. But I, I don't play with water. My wife was pregnant with Micah, and she, we went to Florida, and she was in the ocean, and she kept going further and further. And I was like, stop it! Get your butt back. I can swim. I'm okay. No, you're not. Get your butt. And then we've been watching Shark Week, so I was like, see, see, all those people that thought they was good swimmers and can go out into the open, they got bit. So I knew what I was talking about. Somebody say Washed. I was washed in the wrong way originally because I got clipped and dipped into the water where I didn't want to go and didn't know what to do. But next time I was washed, I was washed in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I was washed clean. Amen? Uh, The scripture I have for you is the scripture I used for you last week. But it applies today, and it's Matthew 28, 18 and 20. 18 through 20, it reads like this. Jesus came and told his disciples... I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Let me just remind you, for those of you who don't know what that means, 
God has all the authority. He's our creator, Yahweh, Jehovah. He has all authority because he created us. He created the earth. He created the galaxy. Yes, Pluto and Mars too. He created it all, and he has the authority. He gave Jesus authority. Jesus is saying, I have authority in heaven and on earth. That's what Jesus is saying. So then, like he said in 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. What does he say next? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, say it with me, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's read 19 together. Let's read it all together one more time. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. What? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to do today. We're here to do what Jesus told us to do. See, anytime we want to be a Christian, that means we want to be Christ-like. I'm starting not to like the word Christian. I like Christian better because it has more accountability to it. I want to be like Christian. I want to be like Christ. That means we're going to act like Christ. We're going to think like Christ. We're going to walk like Christ. We're going to talk like Christ. So we're going to do the things that Christ himself did because he told his disciples, you guys can do all the things I have done you're gonna do all the things I have done and greater and then he says here therefore go into all the nations not just uh, Israel go into all the nations and baptize people in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit then he gives him further instructions in 20 what does he say he says teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this I am with you always even to the ends of the age. Jesus is always with us. We, we, Jesus is always with us. And if Jesus is always with us and he has authority given to him by the creator, if Jesus is in us, that means we have authority. But So he's giving his disciples and all of us, all of you who choose to be a Christian, he has given you authority to do these things. That's why he gave them instructions. He gave, him, uh, uh, he gave them a commission. Go. Go into all the nations and baptize People in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the word wash for a minute since we call this baptism Sunday wash. Let's look at the definition wash. I want you to see these two definitions. You can look it up for yourself, okay? Uh, uh, but this is the first definition, to apply water. I know some of you thinking, duh, I wash my hands, I wash my body, I wash my car, I wash my clothes. I know what it means to be washed. Do you? Let's, let's, let's read it. To apply water or some, some other liquid to something or someone for the purpose of, here's the key, cleansing. Cleansing. Cleanse by dipping, rubbing, or, or, or scrubbing in water or some other liquid. Two, this is the kicker definition, to free from spiritual defilement or from sin, guilt, etc. Now, this is going to be found on dictionary.com, the Webster Dictionary, however you look up your words, Google it. This is the definition you will find. Although they're talking about washing with water, they're also talking about being washed of sin. That's why we call it Washed Sunday, because it's an opportunity, a day where we get to wash and be washed of our sins it is an opportunity to wash away the old and bring about the new or make room for the new amen it's not just to me and it shouldn't be for anyone in here a religious activity I know some people get baptized, just say, oh, the church is having a baptism. We're going to go. We're going to get baptized. Yep, got baptized. Whoops. Or like Kenny was speaking about earlier, because this is what we spoke about in our meeting today. I know that there are people who have been baptized and go, I came out of the water and didn't feel no different. I'll explain to you why that is. But some people come out of the water and they feel different because they know, like Kenny said, their spirit man has been activated. Or they know that, hey, what I have done, this, this public declaration and showing, I have shown that I am washing away the old because I'm ready to step into the new. I'm making a commitment to do so on purpose and with intention. Amen? So let, me, so let me tell you, since we're talking about wash, let me tell you about John the Baptist for a minute. Because I need to break something down for you. See, it says that God, it explains to us clearly in God's word that God created John the Baptist on purpose. 
and with intention. He created John the Baptist. John the Baptist was called John the Baptist because he began baptizing people in water. Now, he's preaching the word to him, but there was a reason he baptized him. It was to make a public declaration and an intentional of it's not just a physical but a spiritual thing. He was preaching to them, but he would always tell them, before you get baptized, you have to return or re refuse to turn away from your sins and turn to God. In other words, stop all the wicked stuff you're doing because you're about to become new. Before I baptize you, stop your... It says that the criminals came to him, tax collectors. They were known like, you know, crooked politicians now. <laughs> tax collectors, soldiers, warriors. I mean, people came to... They heard about this weird guy in the, in the wilderness dressed in these weird clothes, living off of bees and honey and whatever else he was eating. It's, this weird guy was so powerful that when he spoke to them, he could speak to the roughest of the roughest or the softest of the softest. He could speak multiple languages in that way to where he could relate to people. Some people he was really harsh with. Some people he could be gentle with. But for the most part, he told it straight up. And then they did the act of being baptized. Now imagine me talking trash to y'all right now. You old dirty, low-down scum, such such. You need to get your life together. Look, 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 look. And, you know, today if you do that, they'd be like, well, you ain't baptizing me. I ain't trying to hear all that. Don't you know, don't talk to me like that. I'm free. This is America. We can do whatever we want, how we want, when we want. Like Burger King. I got it my way. Okay? That's our attitude. So I don't think that could be done today. But the point is God made or God made sure that John knew the word, taught the word. He was created for an intention. Uh, the book of Isaiah says, they always reference that John is the Baptist was the one who prepared the way for Jesus Christ. He prepared the way. Now we're calling it washed, and I told you about John the Baptist because I, I want to read something as he's speaking to the crowd. I want to read Luke 3, 7, and 8 uh, of something that, you know, John or I'm sorry, yeah, John the Baptist would say. He said, it says, when the crowds came to John for baptism, he said, you brood of snakes. See, there we go. <laughs> there we go. He's just being real. <laughs> Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Listen to eight. This is important. Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Before I read on, all he's saying here is that don't just do the act. You got to change the way you think. You got to change the way you see things. You got to change the way you speak, the way you act. You got to change. You can't just get baptized or you can't just say, I'm a Christian and, 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 and it, it be powerful. It's not going to be. It's not going to have any kind of effect. Let me continue to read. He says, don't just say, here he is saying it. Don't just say to each other, we're safe for we are descendants of Abraham. Listen to what he says. That means nothing. For I tell you the truth, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. <laughs> Just like when Jesus said, y'all don't have to praise me. The stones, even the stones, I'm so anointed, I'm so powerful. I am the God in the flesh that if you won't praise me, if you won't worship me, if you won't honor me, all the rocks will do it. The, lock, the rocks will do it. Just like when Jesus or God was trying to talk to the man, trying to force his way down the road, and the donkey kept bucking and kicking and like, stop, stop, stop. Because the donkey saw that there was an angel, but the man didn't. The man didn't until the donkey had to talk to him. And he's like, what? He's like, it's an, fool, you're trying to kill me. There's an angel with a sword in the front. If we go further, you're going to kill me and you. The donkey had enough sense to say something. Yeah, right. <laughs> he said something. Holy donkey. <laughs> He said something. So then John goes on to say, if you go on to read that after that, and I don't have it on the screen, but if you go on to read that after, uh, it says that he's, the people are saying, so what do we do once we get baptized? He said, if you got two shirts and somebody needs one, give them one. He says, if you're a tax collector, stop trying to take more than you're supposed to collect. Only collect what you're supposed to and leave it alone. If you're a soldier, stop complaining and whining and just do what it is that you're supposed to do. Do what's right. Do better. Be the better version of yourself. And see, when we come and we decide we want to get saved and sanctified or we decide we want to get baptized or all of the above, we have to make a conscious and subconscious decision to serve God, to walk like Jesus. So I got a question for you. Why on earth did Jesus get baptized? If he was the son of God who 
never sinned, who was pure and white as snow, why does he need to be baptized? Because see, the reason John the Baptist created baptisms was so that those who were sinners and walking in wickedness could come and be washed. They would get the word and they would make a decision that from this day forward, I'm living. I'm going to follow Christ. I'm living for God. I'm going to follow the word. I'm going to change my ways. That's what that meant. And then he would baptize him. This is a public, a public declaration in front of people that you are going to do this. You're getting washed, washing off the old so that you can be a new washed. Somebody say washed. washed. So then why did Jesus get baptized? You see, he got baptized because we know that Jesus was intentional in doing everything he did so that when he did leave this earth, he left behind a blueprint. So again, if I go back to what I've been talking about, if we're going to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus, think like Jesus, if we're going to do all of this, we need to follow his way. So he knew that he needed to be baptized, although John even argued with him and said, Jesus, what, what, what are you doing? I'm not baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. Because see, Jesus shows up one day while he's doing baptisms. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Okay, yeah, and I, it's not going to be on the screen. It's in Matthew. You can write it down. Matthew 3, 13 through 17, it says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. He went on purpose. Jesus had an intention. He went there to be baptized, he, although he never sinned. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm reading the New Living Translation. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. This is John speaking to Jesus. He said, so why, good question, so why are you coming to me? Good question. Jesus, you don't need to be baptized. I'm baptizing all these fools <laughs> because we want to be like you. So why do you need to be baptized? Listen to what Jesus says in 15. He says, but Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. And some scripture says it's written. It's written that this is supposed to happen. I'm doing what God told me to do and what I am supposed to do. So John agreed to baptize him. 18 says, after his baptism, Jesus, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settled on him. And the voice of the heavens of God said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. After that moment is when Jesus started his ministry. Now, but, 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 but what was the reason for being baptized? Let's remember again, Jesus said, it's supposed to be done. It's written. I know I'm free of sin. I know I'm the God in the flesh, but it needs to be done. Jesus was the perfect leader, in my opinions, because he didn't just talk it, he walked it. Even if he didn't have to do it, he did. He would be like the leader that would come in and say, I'll clean the toilets, I'll mop the floors, I'll wash the dishes, I'll do whatever it is to make you better at whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Because you will do also the things that I have done and greater. Okay, so again, today's baptism service is not about just doing a religious act. That's not what we're here for. So if I'm talking some of you out of being baptized today, so be it. If I'm talking someone into being baptized, so be it. Because this is not just a religious act. It is a life-changing event. And we should be excited for those who are getting baptized today because it's not just them who are going to experience this today. It's also us. We get the privilege and honor just to be spectators and go, yes, praise God for your victory, for your declaration. Praise God that you are being washed clean today. Now, let me tell you why some people don't feel different when they come up out of the water. It's because they like, they're expecting a dove to come down and the Holy Spirit to, to happen and the heavens open up. It happens for some people, it doesn't. But the point is, you're being washed of your sin so that you make a choice. Whether you come up out of that water feeling differently or not, you are making a choice that it doesn't matter. I am doing this as a public declaration because from this day forth, I'm going to walk differently. I'm going to talk differently. I'm going to think differently. I'm going to look at things differently. I'm going to watch my tongue before I say some things that I want to say because I'm trying to be like Christ. The old me is being washed away so the new me can emerge. The old me is being submerged so that thing can die and the new me can rise up out of that and begin a new. That is what Washed Sunday at Restoration Church Tulsa is all about. Why did Jesus get baptized? Because he knew he wanted to show us how we could be doing so that he could go back to the first scripture we read, Matthew 28, 18 and 20. 
See, Jesus got baptized before this, and then he goes and tells his disciples, it says, I tell, he told his disciples, I have been given all authority, not some and not a little bit, or not regional. He says, all authority over heaven and earth. 19, he says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples to go baptize people. Jesus got baptized because he knew he would have to tell his disciples. Now, when you go and spread the word to these people in these dip- different nations, go ahead and do the act that John did. Baptize them in the water. And let me, uh, let me let you guys in on a little secret. These shirts are the color they are for a reason. Yes, see, we're washed. See, Jesus was baptized before he shed his blood. So I'm saying once you decide to be washed with the water, you're also making a declaration that you're going to be washed and covered in the blood of Jesus. Red shirts on, ten, on, on purpose, intentionally. So today, ladies and gentlemen, let us celebrate. Let us rejoice. Let us have joy. Let us celebrate. Those who are being baptized today. Amen. Amen. So what I want to do before I close is just give you some quick instructions. When, we're, when I'm done, Sierra's going to come and lead us in another song. And we're going to go straight down this hallway out of the double doors here. And at the end of the hall, there's a door. When you walk out of there, there is going to be the, the baptism tub. All right. Those of you can stand around and spectate. Those are going to be baptized today. I'm going to do this. We're going to do this after the worship song. you got 10 minutes because we're going to give you time to transition. If you want to change into your baptism shirt, if you are here and, and going to get baptized and don't have a shirt and want to get the shirt, this gives us time. And it also gives my crew time to make sure we're ready to do some dipping. Y'all are going to be the chips, and we got the salsa. Are y'all ready? <laughs> the holy salsa. So, Sierra, if you would come up, if you would come up and lead us, and I would just ask that you guys would stand as we get ready to do this. And as you stand, remember this again. What we are doing today is we get the honor and the privilege of being witness to those who are going to be dedicating themselves to God by washing themselves clean. Amen. Making themselves anew, getting ready, rid of the old. And we're going to help them with that. Amen. 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 Because we serve a good, good God. How about you? I serve a good, good God. Am I the only one? I'll be the only one. I'll be the only one. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, Sierra, if you go ahead and just lead us in a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So, I just, we're going to sing together. Um, it's an old song. It's an old hymn that if you don't know it, it's okay. It's pretty repetitive. But we just want to worship you, Father. Oh, we just want to get into that attitude of worship before we go out here and celebrate or declarate or whatever it is that we're doing today, Father. All to Jesus I surrender all. To him I freely give. I will ever love and trust his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Sing, I surrender all one more time. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender.
watching our broadcast today. We hope that you were tremendously blessed and that you had an opportunity to grow closer to God through his son, Jesus. And we would also love to partner with you in prayer. If there is anything that we could assist you with regarding a prayer or something we can partner with you in your prayers, just send us an email to restorationchurchtulsa at gmail.com and we will join you in prayer. Until the next time we meet, God bless.